Was anybody taught or has understood along the way of our diverse careers that L1 should not be used at all, and therefore that translation should not be used at all? Yeah. You've had that? Yeah. yeah. We've been yes. taught that. that You've been don't, taught that? But, we don't. but you don't do it? Yeah. <laughs> Does anybody, anybody was taught that and they do do it? They do apply this exclusion to the king because he doesn't communicate. <laughs> <laughs> you do it. I don't use any one in my case. That's it. That's, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Me neither. And I mean that though too. Or outside of the class with the students. Me neither. I, when I, whenever, even in the street, we, we speak in English. Yeah, I do because my, my Spanish and Canada are so bad. Really? That's interesting. So, I mean, the logic is that translation is automatically excluded. If you exclude L1, you exclude translation. Sometimes they ask questions like, would we say this uh, like this in Spanish and Catalan? And then, well, we have to say yes or no, obviously. So that's, you resort, you indirectly resort to translation because, you know, you don't want to refuse answer, you know, to answer the question. But I think that we have a terminological problem again. Because one thing is to exclude L1 and the other thing is to exclude translation. Yeah. I do exclude translation, but I don't exclude L1 in some cases. But is, is L1 when, when a student asks something in Spanish and you answer in English, is that translation? That's or the question. Is that what? No. Yeah. If you don't you translate don't the question, it's not translation. No. no. You okay. answer in English to that question. But he's asking in Spanish. He's no, no. He asked the whole question in English and then that word. Would we say this like this, blah, 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 in yeah. Spanish? Yes. Because that would be uh, one end of the continuum, the other one is the answer to yeah. the question. The, answer, the other problem we have is what do we mean by translation, which yeah. is what you're mm -hmm. Right. These are the results where we ask you, do you use translation exercises in your language teaching classes? So the question was about translation exercises. It wasn't about does mental translation occur? <coughs> Lots of research to say it but does. Of course, translation but, uh, occurs when you learn a foreign language. <coughs> and they are always speaking that foreign language unconsciously in your brain, it's yeah. working, and you translate things in your own language in order to be sure that you understand that. Although you don't write it or you don't do exactly the translation of a good sentence or a good paragraph. No, there's no, lots of research to show that mental that translation occurs. That that's no. different. But this question was about <coughs> teachers using translation exercises. So it's not just replying in L1 to a question in L2 or whatever. What, what intrigued me was the primary school teachers mm -hmm. never or very rarely. I, I thought this, I, I, I found this hard to understand. Yeah. No. Um, by excuse me, by translation exercises, we mean that um, mm -hmm. translating the text, for example, yeah. you know, they've got a text, yeah. the language, yeah. and they have to translate yeah. it to their yeah. language. Or a sentence, or a list of colors. I mean, yeah. we translate, and we, we sometimes do vocabulary translation. I mean, some new textbooks. At the end of the textbook, we have a picture, picture, the picture dictionary. Mm -hmm. So they can have just the picture, and next to it, there is a word in English. Right? And then they just cover that word in English, like this, and then they have space here to write it again in English. And then you've got more space. So if you want, they can write it in Catalan. Okay, but that's okay? if they want. Well, if the so teacher says so. Oh, okay. So it's not there, but there is an option to do that. And do, do you do that? Only with vocabulary. Sometimes, so rarely. Yes. So rarely is the, the majority answer. For me, that's where I I'm I was worried about this. Does anybody think that translation is only written? And if it's spoken, it's interpreting. Therefore, you didn't put translation because you thought it had to be written as spoken. Yeah, that's, like, that's what we're hoping. So there's nobody said, oh, well, I do it, but I speak it, so it's not really translation. It's translation. It's translation. Good. That's yes. Primary school teachers. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Good. We got over that. <laughs> Uh, otherwise, we're in trouble. <laughs> um, 
Secondary school teachers, and I think most of us have done teaching at secondary school level, go up, they go significantly, for rare, rarely too mm -hmm. frequently mm -hmm. in secondary school. Why would that be? Why would it not be done at primary when it is done at like, secondary level? I don't know, secondary school teachers? Yes, I would. Yes, Sorry. yes. yes um, we did a lot of translation exercise for folks because in the formal test we had a one we had one part where students had to translate some uh, paragraph. You were not too long with two paragraphs in the church. With the short paragraphs. This is in the uh, formal test, you mean? Yes, formal the, test. The exam? Yes, yes. yes so exam we had to, we had to do it during classes too. Yeah. That was interesting, actually, in, in Germany, when we asked in Germany, where each uh, land, each part of Germany has different administration, rather like Spain, it depended on whether or not translation was in the final exam. If it wasn't there, then they didn't do it. If it was there, then they do it a lot. Uh, so we're wondering as well how, how, how this applied here. If, if it's, is it something tested at secondary level? Translation? Yeah. No, no. no. They used to test it. No, no. no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Well, at so primary school, oh, yeah. I suppose not at all. So, yeah. Some teachers do use that in exams. I, I, I had uh, some students who go to uh, in secondary schools, and uh, I'm a private teacher. So, uh, and they uh, said that, yes, during the exam, they had translation as an exercise. So they had okay. to be prepared to translate the sentences. And they did translation in the class at school. Okay. So, Anybody else with that experience? Yeah, they were asked to translate paragraphs of yeah. books yeah. and chapters of books mm -hmm. in secondary and at secondary school. Yeah. They are now, or used now. to be? No, now. No. Is this a new thing, or is it an old thing that's just survived? Probably. No. no. In in primary, primary, I mean, there was already a translating an activity when I went to school. Yeah? Yeah. I think it's included in yeah. some tests, some, some textbooks. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's more yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Do, do you think that, that these, the pre, I mean, I'm so really surprised that, that, that this translation frequently is so big there. At, at, at university level, it's not surprising, it sort of goes back because we also have translation courses, so it separates a bit. But um, isn't there a contradiction between the exclusion of L1 and then the use of translation? Mm -hmm. Or are these just two separate mindsets? That, I think that, it has to do with production because you don't expect kids primary school to produce, I mean, freely anything. So they can more or less answer a short question or do something, they can repeat all the time. Basically. I mean, they can produce but something short, but I mean, probably at secondary school by translating, they, they, they can demonstrate that they understood a piece of the text. I don't know, it's really confused because I haven't seen any translation in secondary school, you know, sort of textbooks. And mostly nowadays, well, you know, it doesn't matter now in Aura or in Parliament, or where I teach as well, you know, but all we do is prepare them for exams, for official exams. And there's no translation, no official exams. Yeah, that's the general logic, yeah. It's just like keep on repeating the thing about exams, but it's you not know, so. It's, when, when it's, it's not about speaking English, it's about passing an exam, you know, having a B1, B2 in your I think in here, yeah, actually, I was talking about this today with my husband. Um, there is like, it's very different primary from secondary. Yeah. Like in primary, you try to follow communicative language teaching, immersion, task-based learning, like in a different, you know, in a different way than in secondary. Then the day, when they go into secondary school, then they start dealing with texts, questions, like more, I mean, it's so first different. Play and then they grammar. <laughs> yeah, it's like in primary you try to teach to use the language, and then in secondary they, they start dealing. Yeah, they are the language. language. And 
I mean, it's complicated. Okay, that, that will explain this. Because today I was yeah. talking about this mm. at school, like saying sometimes I feel a little bit I'm wasting my time because you make big efforts trying to mm, get your students producing training and using the language in a meaningful way. And then when they go to high school, mm. everything, all that is lost because then they just stick to the textbook and... There is, there is now a new trend this in the school of teaching, yeah. I think which project work. Uh, yeah. Yeah. About them. Is the idea that they don't really come to many textbooks or... I don't know how successful it is well, at the I'm moment. Very successful. Mm -hmm. Very popular, I'd say. I don't know. But that's, that's somebody who's working on it 25 years ago. Clearly, here in Taiwan, in one state. Sorry, sorry. sorry. No, no. I was talking to this guy maybe a week ago, just because I would have to do something for an assignment. And he said they abandoned clearly because he was demotivating for students because they didn't learn English and they didn't learn art. So I think it's so hard against this kind of clear forever. Yeah, so I think it's a waste of resources and it's a waste of time. So they're using English to teach art. They're using English to teach art. They're using English to teach art. Yeah, it was art and something else. I think it was geography or something. But in the end, it was they had to be lower than the you know sort of the standards of the content that they were teaching because they didn't learn. Either the content or the language. Yeah. Because the reality is that when you go into an English classroom in Spain, I mean, it's probably the teacher who speaks English. The rest of the people are all speaking Spanish. Yes. You know, it's, you know that's the way it goes. Um, I thought, personally, that we would find translation being used at the initial level for the scaffolding. You know, it helps people learn, then you take the scaffolding away. Mm -hmm. And at the higher levels, because it's a very complex task, if you're training professional translators or working at that level. So I, I wish to expect to have a lot at the beginning and a lot at the end. And I find exactly the opposite. The beginning, what age are we talking about? Primary. You say the beginning. Primary school. Because exposure comes first, maybe, and then analysis, as you said. Translator. You see if there's a little exposure. So the schedule doesn't work at all. But you mean that this is the way the translation exercises or just using the other one? Helping everyone to be understood. Yeah, using everyone to be understood. It's different. But probably they don't consider that translation. That's the use of the other one. So we suppose that a lot of informal translation or scaffolding type translation happens as not being in this, answered in this question or not. For primary school teachers really because I'm but also the most against translation. Yeah, but because, uh, sorry, um, you said that at the beginning you use translation as the yes, scaffolding and I think it's right the opposite. The younger the students are, the less translation you need to do. That's what I'm seeing here. Yeah, yeah, yeah so when you deal with people, they were, the younger the students, the less translation you yes, need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three years old, four years old, five years old, they are just, it's like they are programmed to understand you, to understand you. And you don't need much Catalan. You don't need much L1 to, they just want to understand you. So they are, it's like they're used to learning or dealing in situations where so, they don't understand everything you're saying and they, I don't know. Okay. What about well, eight, nine, and ten? <laughs> well, then it depends. If they started when they were three, when they are eight or nine, you don't need much translation because they have a good base. But if they started when they were six, then their level is not so high. So you, you may need some translation. So it, everything is very flexible. It depends on what they It's time consuming because if you're explaining an activity to the pupils, you have to make a lot of effort and, you know, like, uh, Lots of body language or maybe German on in the blackboard. Sometimes it's faster just translating and you know, you Yeah, that's what I mean by scaffolding. That sort of use. Yeah. But like a lot of people say ask, why don't you use translation? Well because it takes too much time. But, but it takes you much time the first time to do that kind of activity. Because when they get used to do it then it's not necessary to spend a lot of time explaining the kind of activity because they, they, they know it. And what is useful is sometimes, maybe because the, the little ones need to be feel um, safe, uh, well, safe in the sense of 
um, understanding the, the, what you are explaining, what they, they are expected to do. And they, they ask you the question in Catalan, they, they translate you, and they need to hear, oh, yes, this is it. And I think it's useful when they do it. Because if maybe there's not... Do you encourage that or do you... No, I don't, I don't. But, but the, the little ones, they're not able to ask, um, I don't know, if they have a, a question related to the, the, the task they have to do. Um, they haven't got enough language to ask the question. So what they do is ask the question in Catalan. And you're answering? And I'm answering in English, in of English. course. So of that's course. That's not translated. No. Me, we are translating me. Into a comprehension. Yes. I, yeah, they are using a one because they don't have enough level to use L2. But you're not translating. And they are not translating. You're, translating. Just, you're, you're just not translating. It. You're just confirming something. Yeah. It's a Maybe, but it's a translation. Yeah. Then, well, there's got to be mental translation involved in order for that to happen. Uh huh. Yeah. I have to learn to have it as well. Them, yeah. But it's not a translation activity as such. Yeah. So the teacher is not, you know, it's not using translation. It's just allowing the students to... I can see when we write up the report, we're going to have to have lots of different types <coughs> of translation from informal help, from bilingual conversations, yeah. and and scaffolding that's... thing, which is going to be... Available. I don't want to be too fussy, but maybe... How often do you use uh, I don't know, I mean, translation exercises? I understand, as we just said, yeah. but you have an activity where you say translate. Sure. Yeah. Okay, but then also translation can be used when you are explaining grammar or you are trying to explain an structure. Then, I mean, it's different uses of translation. Yeah. So for me, like, when do you use or how do you use translation in an exercises in trying to explain mm -hmm. the language in you know, like in different situations. It's not using translation as a whole thing. Do you think if we got together all those incidental uses of translation, it would be bigger at primary, it would be more at primary and less at secondary, or do you think it's constant all the way through? I think it would be bigger in secondary. Yeah. How about textbooks in primary school? Do they, they don't include any translation exercises whatsoever? Last year I had one, and the last activity of the unit was a uh, translation activity. They, were, they had like four or five sentences, like how would you say that? Sometimes it was from L2 to L1, sometimes it was the other way around. It was one activity in the unit, just for that. I think it depends on the publisher. Yeah, yeah, it was mm -hmm. the book I had last year. Some I changed it. Yeah. Yeah. Some methods have been as a last year. I changed it this year. People seem to use a lot of subtitle films. No? I do. You do? Yeah. But subtitles in L2. Yeah, well, I mean in 5th, 6th level, oh, they are from 10 to 12. Okay. 